Welcome back to another step-by-step -step Monday makeup lesson. In each one of these videos, we cover a new topic in this tutorial, but you can check out the full playlist by clicking up here or checking out the description box. And if you're new here, make sure to press subscribe. And now let's get started with the next step. So prepping your skin can make a massive difference. And if you don't prep your skin, it usually ends up getting a little patchy, uneven by the end of the day. If you're one of those people, then these are the tricks that I would highly recommend trying out. If you prep incorrectly, it can be actually worse than not doing it at all. So you wanna make sure that you're following these steps exactly in order to make sure that your makeup is gonna last longer and look super even, even as it fades. 24 hours, your makeup's still gonna look pretty good. So the very first step is to make sure that your skin is clean and fresh. The fresher your skin is, the better the makeup's gonna go on. But you wanna make sure that your skin isn't hot. So say I've just washed my face right now and it was with hot water. You see my cheeks are a little red. This can actually make the makeup melt because as it goes onto the skin, it's gonna go on really hot. And then as your skin gradually cools down, it's gonna end up mixing and melting, which we don't want. So if you plan on washing your face or taking a shower, make sure you allocate enough time between your applications. You really want to make sure the skin has time to cool down before you go in with any products at all. Now say if you're taking a shower in the morning but it's a few hours later or you're going out in the evening time and it's been a while since you've washed your face, I would recommend doing a little bit of a quick tone. I'm using the word tone because you can use your toner but bear in mind the toner you use can make a massive difference. For instance, if you're using a toner in the evening time that has peeling chemical in it, which I absolutely love at night, before applying makeup it's a big no-no. You want to avoid anything that strips the skin or dries the skin. We are not at the stage of teaching the skin anything. We're not trying to get it to do anything. We just want it to be nice and smooth and ready for makeup. So the best way to do that is to use a very mild toner or even just micellar water. But I'm going to take a cleansing wipe and just run this over the skin. Next up, we're going to moisturize. Now, moisturization really helps the makeup last. It's gonna give it something to hold on to. So no matter what type of skin type you have or what type of makeup you're using, make sure to moisturize. Now, I use two different types of moisturizers depending on when I'm doing my makeup. So in the morning time, I will use a moisturizer that has a built-in SPF, which a lot of people ask me about. Where does my SPF fit into my routine? I use an SPF that is a moisturizer. So it kind of doubles up as the same thing. And if you're worried about SPF, you can also buy sprays that you can spray over the top of your makeup, which throughout the day can actually still protect your skin. In the evening time then, I will just use a moisturizer that doesn't have any SPF in it. And this is for a couple of different reasons. One, I don't really need SPF because it's the evening time. And two, if I'm planning on taking any pictures, I really don't want that flashback. And there's a couple of tricks to applying your moisturizer. You wanna make sure it's as even as possible, but you can focus on any areas that tend to be a little drier. So I'm just gonna apply it on my cheeks my chin, my forehead, and then I apply a lot on my nose because my nose gets really dry. Now I tend not to apply my moisturizer right underneath my eyes because it's a little heavy for the delicate skin area. I want you guys to take your ring finger and just run it underneath those eyes and then do the same on your cheeks. And can you feel that difference? Because the skin underneath there is so delicate and so thin. So make sure to be extra careful with it. So I actually use a little eye cream. It's not the same eye cream that I use at night because this is more of a daytime moisturizer. It has these little rollers on here that roll underneath the eyes and brighten. So this can reduce any swelling in there as well as improve circulation and help with any darkness. Another thing that I like to prep with is a balm. So if I have any little dry patches on my skin, maybe you have some old blemishes that are kind of not moving, or you have any dryness around the nose area from a cold, or maybe a little bit of sunburn even, this is great for just applying on those areas to help soften the skin. And this will then give your makeup something to hold on to as well. You can also then use this on your lips, which I don't like to neglect. Moisturized skin is plumper, healthier, and will glow. So any part of your skin that is showing, moisturize it. Not just your face, everywhere. So give yourself a few minutes now just to let that settle, and then we'll move on to the next step. So for the next step, we're gonna prime the skin. So we've done a lot of our prep work already and the moisturizer will definitely help, but priming your skin can also give your foundation a little helping hand. What I tend to do is I use an illuminating primer. The best thing about the primer that I use is it's not only illuminating, but it also controls oils. So even though I'm gonna have really glowy skin, it's not gonna be greasy looking. And less is more when it comes to primers especially if you've prepped with your moisturizer enough, you shouldn't need too much primer. 
Now the primer that we use on the eyes and even the lips usually is a little bit different. You can use this primer on your eyes and your lips, but it won't be as beneficial as using one that's designed for the eyes and the lips. Now another primer that I also like to use is something for large pores because not everybody has the same skin all over unless you're pretty lucky, maybe you do. But I actually have large pores on my nose and on my cheeks. So what I do is I use a pore minimizing primer and you only need a very small amount of it. And what I do is I do a pressing swiping motion. And what this will do is it will fill in any of those pores, make sure that we get a nice even base. It's also slightly mattifying. So sometimes if I'm not wearing makeup, I'll still apply this because it gives my skin that I'm not wearing makeup, but it kind of looks like I am wearing makeup kind of thing. Then I use whatever's left over on the rest of my T-zone. Now, as I said, not everybody needs a primer, but I would recommend it for anybody who has problematic skin. So if you have acne, very oily skin, very dry skin, or just for a special occasion, you want your makeup to last just a little bit longer, then I would recommend using a primer. Now, the best way that I find is to use a primer that works with your moisturizer. So say for instance, if you have combination skin and you're kind of a little bit dry, but you're also kind of oily, you can use your moisturizer to moisturize the dry areas and the rest of the face and then take something like a mattifying primer and just focus that on the areas that you need to because for combination skin, you'll just have certain areas that are different from others. So it gives you a little bit more control. You can use your moisturizer and then you can use a primer and they'll work really well together. But now we're gonna work on what the skin looks like and its tone. If you're lucky, you might have a beautiful overall tone that's quite even, but for the majority of us, we'll have different tones within our skin. So there's three main areas that I focus on when it comes to correcting the skin. They include blemishes, which is basically any little marks on the skin. And then you have dullness, which is typically what you'd see underneath the eyes. It's very similar to the skin, just a little bit more gray or darker. And then overall discoloration. So discoloration can be anything from the redness on my skin here. It can be more of a yellowing appearance or a green appearance, anything that's just slightly off in some areas. And there's lots of different ways to work with it. You just have to choose the correct tone to work with the tone. It has to almost be the opposite. So for anybody who has a pink undertone, a cooler skin tone, go ahead and use green. It's a great way to counteract any unwanted redness. And then for anybody in the warm or warm neutrals, you guys wanna use yellows because that will also counteract the redness in the skin. And this goes for any type of redness, whether it's rosacea on your cheeks, or in my case, from a panic attack that hasn't settled yet, or just a little area from blemishes, using a green or a yellow can definitely help. You only wanna have a light layer of the corrector, we're not looking to hide anything. We still have concealer and foundation and powder over the top. We're just camouflaging it. So a lot of people think that correcting needs to be really intense and needs to be a ton of product on the skin. It doesn't. Just a light layer can make a massive difference. Now, when it comes to dullness underneath the eyes, the same thing goes. You wanna make sure you're choosing the right tone depending on your undertone and the depth of your skin. This pretty much starts from anything of a pale pink, which is typically what I use because I'm quite pale, all the way up to a salmon tone, orange tone, all the way up to even a red tone. A little goes a long way. So just focus it on the exact area that you need it and make sure it's a very thin layer. Now, I know a lot of these steps will feel like, why do we have to do them? And even sometimes I don't bother doing them either, but they do give your foundation a little helping hand. So my favorite way to apply foundation, and everyone's a little different, is I apply it with a flat brush and then I use a blending brush to buff it in. Now you can swap out this brush for maybe using your fingertips and you can swap out this brush for a damp sponge. Now, before I get into applying the foundation, I also have a couple of rules about how I apply it. So I always think of my face in two circles. So we have the inner circle from the eyes around this area and then the outer circle which is the rest of the face. The typical way that you apply foundation is to apply it from the center out. But I find you end up with a lot of makeup in here, especially because I end up applying concealer underneath my eyes and this whole area gets a little extra powder as well. So using too much foundation can just be over the top. So when I apply my foundation, I actually start from the edge of the inner circle and then blend out and just use a little less on your brush as well. This can make a massive difference. So then I take my foundation and I pump a little bit on the back of my hand. I usually use like two pumps at a time. And the reason I put it on the back of my hand and not on the brush is actually to protect the brush more than anything. You don't want to pump your foundation directly onto your brushes. It's not a good idea and it will damage them over time. And also applying it on the back of your hand gives you a little bit more control over how much you apply. So you're gonna dip it in and I dip it in the edge. Then we're gonna start to apply it. So I'm starting on the very edge of the inner circle and I work this through. And I use little sweeping motions keeping them quite short in some areas and long in others, depending on how much coverage I want. 
I try to keep the brush quite smooth along the skin, so I'm not coming at the skin like this and pushing the brush down. I'm keeping it quite flat against the skin, so the bristles aren't really moving too much. And then we can come within the inner circle, but I completely avoid underneath the eyes. And I want you guys to pay close attention to how you're actually applying your product. Even try recording yourself applying your makeup. Sometimes you don't know you're doing something until it's pointed out to you. I do, however, apply a little bit on the lids. It's just the under eye that I avoid. A couple of areas that you wanna watch out for when you're applying your makeup is around the eyebrows. So whether you've filled them in or you're waiting to fill them in, I always like to make sure that I get really close to them. That's why I use a flat brush. So what I do is I do little sweeping motions, kind of in the direction of the hair growth, just so I'm hitting just underneath the hairs. This will just make sure you don't have that gap between your brows and your foundation. And the same goes around the hairline. So what I tend to do is I turn the brush really flat and I just kind of work it into the hairline. You don't wanna get it on your hair. You're kind of just sweeping in that area to make sure it's nice and blended. And there isn't too much product in your brush at this stage either. So what I do with my blending brush now, because this looks pretty even, but it could be better, is I take whatever's left over on my hand. So I just kind of swirl my brush in there just to get a little bit of product. It's not about reapplying or anything. It's just picking up what's ever left over. And then I do little stippling motions. And what this will do is just blend out that foundation, give us a little bit more of an even finish. But then there's also something called a buffing motion. The buffing motion is a little swirl like this, but not everybody can do that. If you have sensitive skin, particularly if it's sensitive to the touch and it can get quite red, the same goes for anybody who has dryness on the skin because this little buffing motion will kind of lift up any of those little dry patches. So we don't want that either. You want to be quite light-handed with the brush. We're not trying to put too much pressure on it. Just let the bristles do their work. Now what I want you guys to do is to take a good look at your skin, see if you need to maybe reapply some areas that you might have missed, or maybe you need to buff a little bit more, and also pay attention to any areas that don't have the coverage that you want. So if you have any blemishes that are still showing through or any discoloration, don't panic, because then we're gonna use concealer and powder to make sure that we get full coverage from it. I always think less is more when it comes to foundation. There's so many other things you can add on to improve the look of your foundation. Foundation really is just there to create an even base for us to continue working with. So this stage, my skin looks pretty even, but it's not 100% where I want it to be. So underneath the eyes, I haven't really applied anything bar a little bit of corrector. So I really wanna work underneath there to create a brighter appearance and give me the coverage that I want. So for that, I typically use a liquid concealer. A liquid concealer is better than using most foundations because they're a little bit heavier. Any cream concealers are usually quite heavy too. And this can create a really uneven base underneath the eyes. Look a little bit patchy, uneven, can usually make you look a lot older as well. So I find a little bit of a liquid concealer works best for me in particular. So what I tend to do is I just apply a very small amount of it just where I need it. And this is kind of the starting point. I can then kind of add some if I need to. And I use a little patting motion just to press the product underneath the eyes. And I recommend looking up and this allows you to get right underneath those lashes and to create a smooth base. So for some people, this won't be enough coverage underneath the eyes. For me, it typically is. But if you wanna add more coverage, go ahead and do that. Well, I did apply a little bit of corrector underneath my eyes, which definitely made a massive difference. But if you haven't done that and you just want to use concealer, you can always get a concealer with a built-in corrector. Now, when it comes to concealers underneath the eyes, a mistake that a lot of people make is to use a really light concealer. That's great if you want to highlight underneath the eyes, but if you have any discoloration underneath that, it creates a kind of a graying effect. So by the end of the day, your under eyes are gonna look kind of gray. So I'd recommend using a corrector first and then going in with your concealer if you wanna use a very light one. They work really well together, but if you're not going to apply that corrector, you need to apply something that's very close to your own skin tone. Now, when it comes to blend Blemishes, the funny thing is a slightly darker shade can work really well for covering up blemishes. So if you have any discoloration on your skin, typically you'll just grab your concealer and just apply it. But if it's a little too light, it can actually make it more obvious. So I'd actually recommend using a concealer that's maybe half a shade darker. Just apply it to that area. And then the little trick is to apply a bit more of your foundation over the top. Now, why do we do that? Because if I apply concealer on this area and it's a perfect concealer and it's gonna really conceal it up, it's gonna actually still be obvious. You have to make sure that it matches the rest of the face. And the best way to do that is to apply a bit of your foundation over the top. That way everything is really seamless. And you also don't wanna go in with a big brush. It's better to use a slightly smaller brush to just pinpoint that particular area. So take a little lip brush and a bit of that concealer and just apply it directly where you need it. So once this concealer is applied, it looks kind of light, but it sets slightly darker. 
You guys can see it's pretty much invisible now, but I'm still gonna take my foundation brush with a little tiny bit of the foundation kind of worked in the top of the bristles and just pat this over the top. Now I'm gonna use a stippling motion because I don't wanna disturb what we've already applied. Now we've got to the point where we're really happy with our makeup and we want to get it to last. And the best way to do that is to set it in place. Now what I would recommend doing is to give your skin a little bit of time just to see if any blemishes start showing through again, or you want to add a little bit more here or there. And you also want to make sure that it's not too wet because if you go straight in with powder when your skin is wet, it really holds on to one particular area. It's going to make it impossible to blend and it can then go really kind of gray toned or too orange depending on the way that it works with your foundation. So just give your skin a little time to settle and then you can go in with your powder or your setting spray. Now a setting spray is great for anybody who loves the look of their foundation and it lasts a really long time for them and they just wanna get it to last a little bit longer. It's also great for people who have drier skin types who can't always afford to apply a lot of powder. But my preferred way is actually to apply a powder foundation instead of just a translucent one. So once you've allowed your skin to settle and it's not too wet, you can go in with your powder. But the first thing that you wanna do is to make sure you don't have any creases. So if I went in straight with powder onto this face, the little creases that have started to appear, because concealer creases, it's okay, but those little creases will grab hold of the powder and just emphasize those creases even more. What we wanna do is to make sure we pat them out first of all, and then go straight in with the powder. But recently I've been leaving the eyes till last. I'll apply powder everywhere else and then just use the excess around the eyes. That way you don't get too much of a buildup. So I'm gonna be using this powder brush right here. You can obviously use any type of powder brush that you want. And you just want to apply a very light, even layer of this. So I tend to start the same way as I did with the foundation on this outer circle. One place in particular that this makes a massive difference is around the nose area. This is also great for any blemishes. As the foundation tends to wear away, the powder foundation comes in and keeps you protected. So you're not gonna see any of those little marks coming through again. Now, typically when you apply your makeup, I always tell you guys to keep your face quite still, but when you're applying powder, this is the only time where you can do little wiggly motions, get into any creases or around the nose to make sure the powder is setting in those areas. So remember when you're working on any areas that might have creases to pat away the creases and then keep the face still and go straight in with the powder. Use soft sweeping motions to finish it off to make sure that any little hairs in the face are lying flat. And then if you really wanna lock that in place, go in with a setting spray. Also, depending on the setting spray that you decide to use, it can definitely help with your skin. So if you have very oily skin, you can find a mattifying setting spray. If you have very dry skin, you can find a dewy one. The one that I use is just for helping it last longer. This makeup should last a really long time for you. If it doesn't, get back to me and we'll figure out why. But make sure to check back next Monday for the next step. But as always, I am here to help. So if you have any problems with this, leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you. Before you go, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.